What is going on everyone? It's Nero again. Here for you some Call of Duty Black Ops in this week's episode of Dear Nero. Traditionally, Dear Nero goes up on Wednesdays. Well, I didn't realize yesterday was Wednesday, so we did a, we did a channel trailer. And uh, but yeah, it's Thursday and Dear Nero is going up on Thursday. And uh, I apologize for that, but still, it, it's here. It's here, right? The gameplay you're watching, I'm using the Golden, the Golden, Dual Scorpions, and uh, probably... what. <sighs> I can't say it's my favorite gun. It's one of my favorite guns in Black Ops 1. Yeah, using the dual scorpions, it's kind of like this ultimate, you know, they're a bad gun for the most part. I mean, they're pretty good if you use them right, but they're pretty difficult to use. A lot of people can't just pick up dual scorpions and, you know, go ham, right? So I like to use kind of guns like this. And what I like about this particular gameplay is I seem to play really smart throughout it. There's a lot of situational awareness and a lot of map knowledge on, in this particular gameplay that I think a lot of people can learn from. And basically take that skill and transfer it anywhere else and any other Call of Duty. I don't know, I just play really smart in this gameplay and I really like it. Let's hop into the questions he writes. Dear Nero, I was wondering about your opinions on the crisis in Syria and what do you think the U.S. should do? P.S. Love Reviews, keep the great work from the guy who thinks the U.N. should attack Syria. <laughs> Alright, so Syria with uh, their chemical missile launchers and the and the people and the dying don't care don't care don't care do not give two shits because it's the news and i don't care at all about the news the only time i will care about anything that's on the news is if we actually go to war again that's the only thing because I, how do people watch the news how i i don't understand how people even like okay you go watch the news right all right today we got a massacre in syria and then Later on today, we have a nice puppy that died, and later on, what breakfast cereal does to your liver that you don't know about, and it's like, it's nothing but horribleness, and then they throw on one little happy tidbit, or whatever on there on the news, which will kind of make you feel better, but anytime I've watched the news, it's always been bad news, and it's always been stuff that doesn't really lead to anything, like the last time anything on the news actually led to something was like 9-11, you know, 2001, and that ended up, you know, us going to war. You know, that's... The Syria thing... Stuff hap I want to say it happens every day, but I know something like that doesn't happen every day. But still, it's... I hate news. And a lot of stuff's not even news. Of course, the Syria thing's news. But still, I, I just don't care. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, this one's gonna... If that Syria one didn't get your blood going, those of you guys actually care about that whole thing, this one's gonna get you going... In one of your previous videos, you mentioned that you were getting the Xbox One before you even knew anything about it. Both the PS4 and the Xbox One aren't backwards compatible, so a lot of people saw these new consoles as a chance to get a console that fits them because their old games wouldn't work either way. My question is, why aren't you open to trying the PS4? He didn't leave his name, by the way. He neglected to leave a name. And why am I not even open? Not even fathoming. The idea of owning a PS4. I'm not even flirting. Not even, not even a little flirt of of interest in a PlayStation 4. One, it's because I hate PlayStation. If you're on the PlayStation, you suck. I'm just kidding. That was completely just jokes. That was all jokes. It was kind of just making fun of the uh, uh, the uh, elitism. Like, you know, everyone, our Xbox is better, our PS is better, PlayStation is better. It... Pick what works for you, right? I like the Xbox system. I've owned the PS3. It wasn't for me. Not saying it's a bad console. It's a fine console, I guess. It's just different. It's different in its own way. And uh, I tried the PS3. I've tried the Xbox. And I like the Xbox a lot more. I like the dashboard system. I like my friends list. I like the fact that I'll be able to keep my gamer tag and all of my gamer score. I like the fact that I'm comfortable with it. And the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are going to be similar. Regardless, people are like analyzing every nano detail of both systems, you know, and in reality, they're going to be pretty similar when they come out. They're going to be pretty close. Remember uh, when the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 came out, the PlayStation 3 was supposed to be so much more powerful than the Xbox. But if you look at them today, would you say that it's exactly so much more powerful? Not really. They're eh, pretty much the same. And that's probably how the, I mean, Microsoft is not going to allow Sony to have a console that's way stronger than it. And Sony is not going to allow Microsoft to just have some 
random good consoles better than them. It's they're gonna be about the same, just new graphics and new stuff. And I want the Xbox. I want my gamer tag. I want my gamer score. I like my friends list. I like the way the uh, dashboard is set up. Uh, I'm I'm comfortable with it. And a lot of people are probably in that same boat. Most people that buy the Xbox One, they'll they'll just buy it because they bought you know an Xbox 360. And most people that buy a PS4 are gonna get it just because they bought. A PlayStation 3 and there's probably a very small little demographic of people out there and that demographics like huh let me weigh the options of each each console I mean if you're an Xbox person you're not gonna be getting Halo no more you're not gonna be getting Gears of War no more if you go to a PlayStation 3 and that's a big thing to some people not personally to me but you know some people feel about that way about that so I don't know that's just a reason I, I like the Xbox and not to say PlayStation's bad but it's just not for me, and it is for a lot of people. A lot of people are liking the PS4, and see you guys over on the PS4, I guess. All right, next question. He writes, Dear Nier, I noticed on Twitter the other day that two of your friends created new YouTube channels to match the cinema brand. Does this mean that you're, you're going to be doing future collaboration videos or series between all of the cinemas, Ben from Ohio? So what Ben from Ohio, who is a loyal, loyal Twitter follower, which you guys, a lot of you aren't uh, loyal Twitter followers, but he is definitely one. And he went ahead and noticed that I was retweeting and helping them out. So basically what's happening is Toucan and Blue Bob. Uh, some of you, those names may not mean anything to some of you. It may mean a lot to some of you. Uh, Toucan, I did a lot of the Minecraft hardcore survival stuff. He does have his own YouTube channel. And uh, he, Blue Bob has a YouTube channel, but he has a copyright strike on it. And... They both basically just came to the idea they're going to start new YouTube channels. And these new YouTube channels, they're going to you know, put forward the most effort they've ever put into a YouTube channel that they ever have. And they, they're they are making their first legitimate runs at becoming YouTubers. And that would be you know, SP Blue Bob and SP Toucan. And if you'd like to check them out, I'll put a link in the description too. There's Toucan Cinema and Blue Bob Cinema. And both of them, right now, I think they have a hardcore survival series in Minecraft with themselves, like, you know, but one with both of them together in the same in the same series. I think Toucan's uploading that. I don't know. But either way, yeah, they're going to make their first legitimate shot at actually becoming YouTubers, and that's kind of a cool thing. Um, I'm going to do a lot of Let's Play stuff with those two. Uh, maybe not on this channel, maybe more on Nier's Let's Plays. Or maybe on this channel, we all know. But, uh, yeah, he, they're... They're making channels, and I think it's kind of a cool thing. And they didn't know what to call themselves. I'm like, screw it. Everyone has cinema in their name. That's even better. <laughs> all right. So this next question, there is a Walking Dead spoiler, but it's not a spoiler if you're all caught up with the series. So if you're, if you're not caught up with the series, go ahead, click your like, click your favorite, and click away from this video because this might spoil stuff for you guys that aren't caught up yet. But okay. Are you ready? Actually, I might be able to make it non-spoiler. So we'll try. He writes... Dear Nero, Walking Dead Season 4 is about a month away, and I was wondering, what do you want to see happen in the season? I'd like to know your thoughts, keep up the great work. So he said what he would like to have to happen, but I didn't want to, like, spoil anything. Ah, shit, so I'm still going to have to spoil stuff with my... I hate talking about The Walking Dead in videos. It's, like, seriously the most hard thing ever, because I'm always worried I'm going to spoil it for someone. But you know what? At this point, if you are worried about a spoiler going up about the show that's, you know, been, like stalemated for freaking ever then uh that's your fault it's your fault okay so what i'd like to see in the walking dead season four last i checked ah crap last i checked weren't they didn't they bring all the old people to the prison right isn't that isn't that isn't that kind of what happened all the old people were at the prison i want to see what happened with that of course and i'm sure that's gonna happen but then after that the whole governor thing I kind of want it to end, kind of don't want it to end, because if the govern if the governor thing ends, then then what else do they got? They have to have some other storyline other than the governor. So I really don't know what to expect. But I'm super excited because The Walking Dead's like the first TV show I've ever been like ridiculously excited for. I'm not a television person. I I, I don't watch TV. I bear I watch like Sports Center when I go to sleep or football on Sundays or whatever. But when The Walking Dead's on, like I am at, like. I'm like sitting there waiting for this like to come on 10 minutes before the show is even on just ready to go like every week and it's such a fantastic show and I don't know what I want to expect all I know is Daryl better not die because Daryl is freaking awesome and he's like uh, he's just awesome his name uh, the actor who plays him is Norman Reedus and he played in the Boondock Saints which is a freaking cult classic if you guys haven't seen the Boondock Saints 1 and 2 you guys really need to go ahead and check those out 
that's going to be awesome. And I'm going to try and go ahead and uh, do one more question here because I like fantasy football and, you know, some other people do too. The question was, dear Nero, with uh, football season starting, I was wondering if you did a fantasy football draft. And if you did, I would like to know your top three picks. David from Florida, go Buccaneers. <laughs> Go Buccaneers. We're a Browns channel here on Near Cinema. We are a Cleveland Browns channel. Everyone here is a Cleveland Browns fan. I'm sure that's, everyone agrees in the comments that they are a Browns fan. But my top three picks were uh, Drew Brees, Trent Richardson, and Frank Gore. And uh, Frank did all right. Drew Brees did great like he always does, especially in our league. Our league has a bit different of a scoring system where we go for six points per touchdown pass as compared to most leagues that do four points per touchdown pass. So having someone like Drew Brees, like having a good quarterback is a little bit more essential in my league as compared to others. And uh, Trent Richardson bombed last week, and the Browns bombed as well. And I was like, what the hell, man? So Brandon Whedon, right? I like Brandon Whedon, man, but he this is a second-year quarterback. He's already kind of old, and he threw like 53 passes last week. 53! While franchise running back Trent Richardson over here gets 10 carries. It's like, why? Why is this a thing? You are not throwing the ball 40 times more than giving the ball to Trent Richardson. I don't know. But, yeah, those are my top three picks. And I did win week one. I won week one in my fantasy football season. And I'm looking forward to winning week two. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. And if you did, remember to leave a rating where you guys feel the video deserves. And let me know in the comments, did you guys enjoy it? I'd like to know if you guys enjoy it. Also, if you're doing fantasy football, talk about fantasy football. Go to Twitter, follow me on Twitter, you non-Twitter followers, and talk to me about fantasy football. Because no one on there ever wants to talk to me about fantasy football. Ever. It's horrible. It's depressing, really. But yeah, if you guys like your what question feature on next week's episode of Dear Nero, send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the tagline Dear Nero at the end of the week. I like to go through them. I read them all. And I pick the best ones I think would be good for the show or ones that I have not answered yet. And I write them all down. And then we do the series. And it's a good thing. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. Remember to leave a rating. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I was banging seven grand rocks.